friends, this is According to Callus, and it's late, and I'm joining you to pop in a quick episode here, so my bonus episode doesn't turn into a fill-in episode. Well, <laughs> sometimes you just can't get ahead. Too many things going on, just busy, busy guy, not complaining, because I'm quite frankly very happy to be busy. It's good to be employed, it's good to have things going on, and it's good that people want to hear what you have to say. All that being said, here we are again. It's a Thursday. Took the little theology class that I've been doing today, and was interesting. Learned a couple little things out of it. Which I guess is kind of the whole point, right? A little personal enrichment. Mm. Causes me to um, think that before you make a decision, you got to remember who you ultimately answer to. You know, and it's really easy to, to know that intellectually, but it's another thing altogether to live that way. And sometimes that answering isn't just father god but it's your family and the challenge is is am i doing right by my family well both my daughters are gone my wife's got a pretty heavy load on her right now as do i let's i mean we're not joking around but so hey let's uh let's look at just what else can you possibly put on your plate and stay on top of things <laughs> Well, uh, job's kind of busy right now. Been working Saturdays. Haven't done that since I got out of the car business, honestly. And uh, kind of feels good to be productive on a Saturday, even though you don't necessarily want to be doing it. But that's, hey, that's what you need to do. It's just part of the job. Again, go forward. Make the most of it. It reminds me, you know, I like alliteration. I like kind of being pithy and snappy. And I, I find it enjoyable to have fun on my podcast. But every once in a while, I just get a little reflective. It just, I have to think to myself, am I being effective? Am I am I putting out the message? Am I, am I bringing home people? Are they being reassured? Are they hearing what maybe they need to hear and they don't know it? Are they hearing maybe something that sounds vaguely familiar are they being encouraged now i know there's plenty of guys on talk radio and they make their money by discouraging everybody talking down how terrible things are and how oh you have to get into a panic and you know that's quite frankly not my style i mean i like getting agitated from time to time i like being passionate but the last thing I want to do is ever cause anybody to think that all is lost or that the end is near or it's over. I mean, that's just not a productive way to live your life. And I've struggled, you know, in the past with the idea that how do we get past this? You know, is this the precipice that we fall off of as a country or as a state or as a county or a city or whatever? And somehow, some way, we just keep moving forward. So, you know, I've done a little study on historical things. You know, I kind of did get a degree in that for whatever, <laughs> whatever use it's been lately. But one of the things that I remember, you know, Western culture, it fractured. The, the Roman Empire basically created two capitals. So they had Constantinople and Rome. And they separated, they bifurcated, and through successive invasions and mm, bad deals, if you will, the Western Roman Empire kind of collapses upon itself and it gets new rulers and um, there's like a constant battle and jockeying for who's in control. But the Eastern Roman Empire, which is basically Greece, Turkey, that kind of area, they continue on for roughly another thousand years i'm exaggerating but not really 
I think it was 660 AD is roughly when uh, the Roman Empire uh, or the Western portion finally collapses. And it's about 1600s when the remaining rump state that uh, becomes Turkey, but was formerly known as the Eastern Roman Empire or Byzantium, is basically left with Constantinople. And they, and they eventually get overrun. Now, it didn't help that multiple successive times the Western Europeans uh, went through there to go rescue the quote-unquote holy lands and punished the Eastern Orthodox because, you know, well, the Catholic Pope told them to. So, the point is, is that an empire can go on as a piece of itself for quite some time just because something fractures or something isn't the same as it once was doesn't mean it completely goes away right away so when listening to brian mcclanahan uh kind of getting catch or caught up catching up i should say for the last week's worth of uh episodes when i was in the truck today he, one of the Actually, probably two of the episodes directly related to the idea that the United States is at a point where it's going to become a disunited group of states, right? And it won't be the standard, quote-unquote, north-south that it was, you know, 160 years ago. It's going to be something different, something odd. Maybe try... It's not bifurcate, so it's trifurcate, maybe quadficate, right? I mean, I'm making stuff up now, but we could come out of this situation where we've got a number of countries, or perhaps just two, and it's like loose amalgamations. And I, you know, I joked previously. Well, maybe we should just toss California. Texas don't doesn't need to leave, but we we don't need to separate. But we can get rid of California, and that would fix so many things. But the problem is, is I don't think we could get 26 or 30 states or whatever it is we would actually need to toss California. But I think the whole, the whole entire country would benefit. However, the problem is, you know, once again, I see another news posting about more California companies coming to Texas. And while on the surface that may sound great, I mean, we're going to get another business, we're going to get other workers, we're going to get more jobs... But we're going to import a bunch of people that don't belong to our culture. And that's, again, one of the things that Brian McClanahan was talking about. The United States had four distinct cultures shortly after its founding. And those were just made up of British people. Can you imagine the different cultures and breakups that we actually have now? Or breakdowns, I should say, that we have now? I've seen six, I've seen nine, I've seen 13 different distinct cultures that exist within these United States. And there's nothing that say that several of them couldn't band together and work together as a federation. But do you really think California has a whole lot of anything in common with Florida or Alabama? I doubt it. Now you can maybe argue Texas because we've got a lot of California refugees here has something in common with California. But I mean, realistically, I think Maine and uh, I guess East or Northeastern or Northwestern. Oh, what the heck? Sorry. I'm so sorry. It'd be Southwestern Oregon, right? The section of Oregon that's directly north of California, but is not by Portland. That area and maybe the far northern part of California, they may have more in common with folks in Maine than anywhere else in the country, just based upon the maritime, kind of hilly, foresty country thing there. It's an interesting concept. I mean, you, you could end up with five or six different little countries with it. What was once our empire. And both coasts could end up being in the same club, or at least federating with themselves. I mean, there's talk of New Hampshire and Vermont becoming their own things again, right? I mean, more power to it. Brian McCann, Brian McClanahan spent a lot of time talking about just devolving, you know, local control, local um, 
Moore's local um, direction. It sounds very appealing. You know, and Chris Ann Hall often talks about the conservative trap. I mean, there's these, all these dichotomies and different issues that get thrown out there specifically to trap and force those people that are, you know, at least nominally conservative from putting themselves in a position where they're defending something that they ought not be defending or they're attacking something that they ought not be attacking. They set themselves up for failure in that way. So between the two of them, I... I, I think maybe we're on to something. If Texas really truly wants to be a republic again, they ought to be able to make that decision for themselves. Likewise, if California would like to be either their own republic or multiple states, I'm all for it. Let them break up. Let them go their own way. But when they do it, I'm I'm also in favor of allowing Washington and Oregon to split into two different states each. I mean, that'll balance out some of the crazy that we get out of California, but it'll also allow for better local control. Uh, uh, perhaps a state government that more closely resembles the population that's actually present within the state. And then you've got states that, um, unlike Texas, really have one large metropolitan area and they kind of dictate the terms for the rest of the state. You know, Michigan, you've basically got the Detroit area and Illinois you've got the juggernaut that's Chicago and and Iowa really doesn't but if you were going to call anything a swing or a, a, a poll it maybe be Des Moines Wisconsin has Milwaukee and Madison and it's the two together because not one of them has enough pull to jerk the whole state one way or the other then, of course, Minnesota has Minneapolis. And, I mean, even Indiana has to deal with Indianapolis. Now, fortunately, Indianapolis doesn't quite overcome the entirety of the rest of the state, but it, it it's kind of iffy. So when you're dealing with a state that's relatively small but has a large city or municipal area within it, they dictate the terms to the rest of the state how they have to be by and large. But again, it doesn't have to be that way. You know, if they were to actually do proper redistricting, a lot of these issues would solve themselves. I mean, the the U.S. House would probably have a couple thousand members, which it should be self-evident now why they don't want to do it. I mean, the Texas State House, we're constitutionally restricted to 150 people, but there's nothing to say that we couldn't go back and change it to 300 state reps. To more accurately represent the population that we now have in Texas. I mean, you have to do a constitutional amendment. But I also don't think you're going to have a whole lot of those state reps running out to push for a constitutional amendment. I mean, I could be wrong. Um, I would certainly be open to um, expanding the state senate. I mean, why do we only have 30 I mean, we got 254 counties or whatever it is. I don't remember the exact number off the top of my head. It's late. I'm sorry. I should do better. I will do better. But I'm just, I'm just trying to look at ways that we could improve the situation here. That we can preserve what's valuable and make our stand be heard. You know, reward people's efforts. So if you expand the state Senate in Texas, say say you make it 100. And now you everybody has at most 10 counties they're covering, as opposed to some of these state senators covering like a quarter of the geographic area. I'm exaggerating, of course, but it's just these huge swaths of land. Now, granted, by population, there's not a lot of people there. If we do it by county, or say a group of three to five counties, and those are your state senators, it kind of balances things out from what we would end up with in the House. And I, I'd be really interested to see how something like that played out. But they're they're not going to do that. But if we caught one or two or three state reps, maybe a couple of state senators that would say, hey, you know what, we ought to reconsider the redistricting and the 
apportionment that we're doing in this state. I mean, when we set those numbers, the population of the state of Texas is what? I don't know, 8 million, 9 million? We have more than that in the Metroplex right now. We have north of 30 million people in the state. If we're not representing those people well, that's not an appropriate government. I mean, we all know that the federal government's a mess. I mean, that's just kind of a given. We accept that. And then when you throw in the inevitable breakup that's being predicted by multiple people, perhaps we can separate in a peaceful way, particularly if people are properly represented. If people feel like they have a say and a buy-in in the government that they're answering to. I don't think that's a too high of a request or it's out of line and certainly worth a discussion. But the question is, is, are there people that are willing to discuss it? I don't know. We'll find out eventually. I mean, we're going to be hitting up on a primary season here in just a couple months. Maybe we make that an issue. Hey, are you willing to look at expanding the number of house reps or the number of senators in the state? Inquiry minds want to know. I mean, we know what their knee-jerk answer is, but the question is why. I mean, proper representation means that you have a smaller group of people that you answer to. And again, I've largely given up on the federal government. I I don't think it's redeemable. I mean, the entire executive branch (laughs) is just a mess. I, I don't, I mean, there may be a small minority of individuals that are working for the executive branch that are really good, solid people, and maybe they're the ones that are protecting us from all the evil that is in the world, but the vast majority of those people are now not on our side. They're not looking out for the interests of the American people. They're not looking out for the Constitution, and they are certainly not in, interested in protecting our rights and our liberties, and obeying and defending their oath. There's lots of evidence to suggest that in fact they're working to actively undermine the oath and the constitution that they took the oath to support and defend. And I just don't understand why we tolerate this. But again, I've largely written it off. I don't think it's redeemable. And if hail on fire should come out of the heavens and decimate all of Washington, I would not be surprised. I may shed a tear, but I would not be surprised. But the question is, is are we dealing with something similar in Austin? I'd like to believe we're not. I would like to believe that we still have quite a bit of influence down there and we can we can prevent some bad things happening, but... Man, our statewide leadership is just lacking. And we could do so much more. And I, you know, I've, I've got on this. Texas should lead. We should have liberty leaders. Texas should be a liberty leader. We should not be an also or a me too or, oh, oh tag me in. But that's what we are on all these things. I mean, we're, we finally got around to our version of permitless carry. But talk about being mediocre, middle of the pack. I mean, we're number 23 or whatever. Come on. And because people were afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of. Nothing has dramatically changed. Nothing's going to dramatically change. We're going to go forth and keep doing what we do. This fear is misprint or misplaced. People that believe in liberty respect others' liberty. People that value freedom will value other people's freedom, even when they disagree with them. Now I know, I know. We're going into that uh, <sighs> the guy from the Middle Ages who said that he can and disagree with you vehemently, but he's prepared to die to defend your right. Well, we think he was largely bluffing. I'm not even going to bring up his name because, quite frankly, it doesn't matter. It's this, it's this age-old thing. It's this old saw that gets brought up all the time. 
But the reality is, if you value liberty, if you value freedom, that means you have to protect those people that do things you don't agree with or you don't like or quite frankly may even make your skin crawl. But you have to protect their right to do it. So long as they're not hurting somebody else, so long as they're not violating the notion of don't hurt people and don't take their stuff, you kind of got to let them be. Now I know, I know. Hey, look. God will deal with these people in his own time. It's not the government's responsibility. Until they go and hurt people and take their stuff. And then if you want to use the government to deal with it, I would understand. I would support that. And that's that's a wholly appropriate action for government to take. But as I've been trying to talk about, we have the lesser magistrates. We have all these functions that we should be using. We still have the jury box. And oh, I pray at least once a week that we avoid using the cartridge box. But the soap box, while it might be dead, is not completely gone. And here I am again, another night, putting out a podcast, trying to cheer people up, trying to get people to think positively, trying to assure you that all is not lost. Just because it's not as great as it could be doesn't mean it couldn't be better. Just because some of us are discouraged and some of us witness defeat after defeat and more appropriately titled surrender after surrender on the part of the people that we hired to go do a job down in Austin, that doesn't mean we're going to quit. It doesn't mean that we have to give up. Yes, we're going to vent our frustrations. Yes, we're We're going to take a deep breath and then we're going to go on and we're going to do the best that we can because that's just what what we got to do. That's what you got to do. You got to suck it up and show up. Just because it's dark, just because it's stormy doesn't mean it's all over. I mentioned it multiple times in the last week or so. It ain't over. We can take it back. We can fight the good fight. We can demand more. And we can do more. I'm just going to say it one last time. No, it won't be the last time. I'm going to bring this up a lot more and more. What are you going to do? What sacrifice are you willing to make? What are you going to give up? It's so much better to be proactive than reactive. It's so much better to be active than sitting at home complaining. Now I know there's a uh, there's a rally tomorrow, which by the time you're listening to this will be this evening, Friday between uh, I guess it's uh, six no six thirty. And 8 o'clock, or it might be 5 30, 7 o'clock. You can go to uh, Kyle Sims' uh, Facebook page, KD Sims, there. He's got all the information posted. I would love to say I'm going to be there, but I just can't make that promise with work schedule right now. Hey, but you guys go out there. You hold the line. You let Raytheon know that you do not approve, you do not think it's a great idea that they're mandating medical procedures against people's will. These guys are government contractors and not just our government. They're a multi-billion dollar business and they push their weight around. And perhaps it's time they heard from some of us. We let them get away with a lot of stuff because they do things that are positive and helpful to McKinney and Collin County. But when they start trampling on the rights and the liberties of their own employees... To win a couple of brownie points from Resident Joe. That has to be enough. We cannot and should not tolerate this anymore. Well friends. I'm just shy of the 30 minute goal that I put in for every night. And it was supposed to be short. So I'm going to call it a day. And tell you all. I will see you on the other side. Good night.